Scott Weaver with Designers Workroom and today we are working on part two of our video on how to make full Roman shades. So in front of me we have the completed shade with the bottom hem. This is what you're looking at the bottom hem. Our side hems are in. This is thermal lining. If you haven't looked at the uh, first part of it go ahead and go on to my YouTube channel and firing part one and please watch that and now we're at the point of where we're going to start marking off for our rings so what we need to do is we are going to be marking our first mark from our very bottom is going to be up four inches so with a pencil or whatever you have let me just zoom in on here a little bit we're going to go up from our bottom and we're going to put a mark right by our side hem at four inches. Then we're going to go six and a half inches up from the, the mark that we just put on. We're going to put another mark at six and a half inches. And then our next two marks are going to be at five inches. So five inches and five inches. And that is for our pleats. Now, once you have one side, you can do this in several ways, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this in half and make sure my bottom is even, and then I'm just going to go ahead and mark it on this side. So all I'm doing is going to the next, to the other side of the shade and following these marks. You don't have to do it this way. You can go ahead and just mark it um, in the same manner that we just did. But this is how I'm going to do it. Okay. So now I have a mark on both, both of these sides. Now we're going to go across. Now sometimes you have to work just a little bit of... Um, I've got a statement here. Let me get this here. I'm sorry. So sometimes you have to um, play around with your numbers. So here you have 39 and a half inches. So we want approximately between seven and eight and a half inches going horizontally across for our uh, rings. You don't want to go out overly more than that. Like you don't want to go 10 inches or more because in between the rings it starts to sag. So I'm going to start off with 39 and a half and let's do this. If you do 39.5 and you divide that by 4, you come out with 9 and like 7 eighths. So that's a little big. So now I'm going to take the 39 and a half and I'm going to divide it by 5. 39.5 divided by 5, it comes out to 7.9 inches. Well, I'm not going to go with 7.9. I'm going to go 8 inches. Now here's the key when you do something like that, is you want to uh, make sure you're working from left to right when you're marking the shade because what's going to happen is your ring spacing on your last one is going to be slightly different so I'm going to turn my shade around so I can I can see it but it's easier to to go with halves and three quarters and what have you than it is to go with uh, like seven eighths of an inch it can really uh, get confusing at that point so I've got it here, and when I said 8 inches, so I'm going to go 8 inches, 16 inches, 24 inches, 32 inches. That leaves me 7.5 inches for my last ring in between it, and that's fine. It doesn't have to be perfect, um, because there's never a scenario where that has to be exactly 8 inches or 7.9 inches. Uh, so again, we're going to mark it again, 8 16, 24, 32, and of course I'm following where I put my marks on my side hems. Let me just make sure you can see that whole thing. Okay. All right, here we go. Back at my mark, each one. 8, 16, 24, 32 and my last set of marks. Eight, 16, 24, 32. Now we're gonna sew on our rings. 
The easiest way I've found, well, I can say it's sewing on. We're actually not sewing on, we're tying them on. So I am going to take my yarn. And we are going to put this right through. Maybe. Usually I can get this in here pretty good. Okay. We're going to make a very long, let me move this out here a little bit. I'm going to make this in, uh, as long as I can with my arms. Okay. Then I'm going to cut it. This is going to be the easiest way you've ever sewn a ring on. Now, where, right where you put the marks here, let me zoom back in again. I'm going to go on this side, right where you put the marks. You're going to go right through, make sure you're going right directly through the shade. There's my needle right there. You want to make sure you're going through the lining and the face of the fabric. Just enough to catch it. And the last one. I'm going to pull it all the way over without pulling it out, of course. I'm going to cut it off. I'm going to start on my next set of rings. Going straight through. Let's see if you can see this a little bit better here. You just want to make sure you're pinching through the lining and the fabric, but you don't want a big honking thing on the other side of it, so you just want enough that you're catching it. Okay. Once you've got that, I'm just going to do these two rows so I can just kind of show you the whole thing. Once you've done that, Go ahead and cut directly in between each of these. Like that. Now you're good to go. And all you're going to do is put a double tie. You're going to tie a double knot, I should say. When you get your double knot on, I recommend taking hot glue and just glue in, just to put a little dab of glue on that knot. Once you do that, you never have to worry about that coming loose again. Just a very little bit. So then all you do is just tie them. And when you get these on, you rethread your needle and you keep going. And this is pretty quick. A little bit of glue. And then when you trim them, leave about a half inch, quarter to half inch. You don't want to cut it real close to it. You want a little bit of a, um, a little bit of it showing. And the reason why is because just in case it does pull a little bit, you're not pulling it right out. So you're just leaving a little bit just like that. That's what you want. 
Um, so we're going to go ahead and do that. Now while I've got this, I'm going to show you the bottom bar here. Now I kind of explained this in part one, but I'm going to explain it a little bit better because this is what they make screen fra frames out of. These metal things, uh, when you have a frame, you have a replacement uh, screen and they, they make it out of this. And you'll find this at Lowe's and you'll find it, or Home Depot, I purchased this one at Lowe's. Um, comes in pretty long lengths, I think it's like six feet or seven feet long. Uh, you cut it with a hacksaw, you get it to the, to the width of your shade less one inch. So this shade here, I think it's like 34 and a half, so you're cutting this about 33 and a half inches. So you can still close up your shade. Um, again, it's what they make uh, the actual frame. So you'll find this in with all your screens for your outdoor um, windows, that window screens. And so what you're going to do is you're going to put this little guy inside the bottom of your hem. Now you've got a couple different choices. Um, you can hand sew this closed. Um, you can straight stitch it closed if you like, but it's a little difficult since it's the bottom of the bar, unless you're, <laughs> you're going to have a hard time. Um, or you can just take your hot glue if the, if the fabric will adhere to the hot glue, that'll also work. In this case, it will. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to glue this closed. And that's going to be totally up to you whether you want to use hot glue or if you want to use, uh, or if you just want to hand sew it on. But I have found on, on fabrics, this does work pretty good um, for this. And if you do it right, you don't see the glue. Okay, so that's how you get the bottom bar in there. That's a nice stiffener. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hand tie these on. Then I'm going to rethread my needle and then I'm going to keep uh, going up. And that's what you want to do with your shade uh, until you get all your rings on. And we'll be right back and we're going to finish this off. So now we have all of our rings sewn on. And they've been all glued. We have our bottom bar in and that is all sealed up here also. Next thing we're going to do is take our split rings and then we are going to attach them to each one of these bottom. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Basically they're split so you can clip them on. Clip it on each bottom. And then we're going to bring it up to the next set of rings. I'm going to clip that in as well. Then to our third set. And our last row of rings. And notice I've left these pins at the top. 
and you want to do that until you mount it so the lining doesn't separate from the fabric. Okay, that's all of our sets of rings, and that's what's going to cause this stacking. And another tip, I'm not going to do it right now, but what I did do on the one that's hanging up here, is I did press these folds on the back side. I, I stacked them, and I lightly pressed them in. And then I flipped it over and I gave it just a light press to just to hold these pleats in in place. So that's just a little tip. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to mark off for the length. In our case, our length is 15 inches. So you want to make sure that you have this kind of tight, like you don't want it all gathered like that. You want to kind of push against that split ring a little bit. And then carefully measure up to your finished length, which is 15 inches from the bottom. Put a mark. And then over on this side, put another mark at 15. And then we're going to draw this line. Just a very light pencil mark. This is basically where our finished length is going to be. However, when you mount it, staple it onto the board, only put a few, and if you can, hang it up like that, and then measure it to make sure it's 15 inches um, both ends and the center just to make sure you don't have to make any adjustments to it Okay, so I drew my line straight across here my pins are a little bit below So that part is done The next part is to grab our board Let me get this out of this way for a second and we are going to staple on our returns. So we're going to staple it on. It goes here. And remember, we crease this piece right here. And we're going to staple it on at about a half inch. I do this quite often, so I can pretty much tell you what a half inch looks like. You also notice that I only covered the board and I wrapped it around because this is going to come around here and give it our clean finish. So we're here, I'm just going to drop this off the table like this so I can finish it. Okay, so that's what that kind of looks like right here. Then I'm going to do the other side. Like that. The next step is to take the shade and flip it upside down. So you can see your pencil mark right here. And not that you're going to be able to see this very well, but what I'm doing is I'm putting this up. Let me flip it around so you can see it. I'm going to, there's my pencil mark. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come on one side over here. I'm going to get it even with my pencil mark. I'm going to staple it. I'm going to staple it a couple of, then I'm going to stretch it over to the other end, I should say. 
to make sure it's even with the edge. And then I'm going to staple that. And then I'm going to put a couple of staples in the center of it to make sure um, that it's not going to go anyplace. Then I'm going to hang it up onto the wall and I'm going to test the measurement just to make sure that I don't need to make any adjustments. So I'm going to go ahead and staple this on. And I'm going to the other edge of the board. And I'm going to staple that end, keeping it lined up. Okay, and that's all the staple is going to put into it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I am going to hang it up. Now you can just drop it off the table like this, put a clamp on it and measure it, which is approximately what I'm going to do right now to check my length. Once I know my length is and then um, it is correct, if it's not, I'm going to pull a staple out or two. I'm going to readjust my length to make sure it's 15 inches on both sides. And then we're going to finish off the top. And we are also going to press these folds. You see this top fold kind of, let's see if you can see it, kind of wants to wing up. So that's why I'm going to press it down a little bit to make sure it looks more like this one up here, where the folds are slightly pressed in. Um, now, being a full Roman shade, you don't want this this doesn't have to look so perfect because it's meant to look like it's a, a real shade pulled up so even though these might wing up a little bit that's okay because it's supposed to look like a full roman shade not like a, a balance so anyway i'm going to finish this off and then we'll be right back now my length has been checked it's perfect it's right on the money so the next step is to finish this off at the top and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this edge right here where it's sticking out a little bit. And I'm just going to hit it to staple it down a little bit. So it's out of the way. Then I'm going to take my fabric. I'm going to fold it in around the return, or I'm sorry, around the board. Fold it in to give it a nice clean finish at the top. And staple it. I'm going to come on this end. It's always good to have clamps. Clamps are a great tool to have.
Okay, that's what gives it a clean finish on the top of it. This is what we have so far. But now I'm going to flip it over. And we're going to press these folds in. Right, so we're going to fold these in, press them. Just a little crease. And we're going to flip it over. And we're going to just lightly give this a press. Just enough to calm the material down a little bit. Okay, now there's something I want you to show you here. Is if you look at these two next to each other, they're going to be identical, the patterns and everything. I match all the patterns. So because these are going to go into the same room, so that we've got the same length, the same everything right here. If you would put these together like that, all the folds are all the same. So there you have it. There's your... Full Roman shade and I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you've uh, You can uh, make one of these shades for yourself. They're They look great in, in a room. We do them all the time. So good luck Take care and have a good evening or day Scott Weaver with designers work. I hope you enjoyed the content of my videos and I'm hoping that you're going to like and subscribe to my channel. It would be muchly appreciated. Also, I put a lot of time and effort into putting this together. And I'd appreciate it if you wouldn't mind donating a small portion of money to keep this channel going. It's, of course, not necessary, but it's always appreciative. And also with that, if you have any questions regarding um, maybe some drapery stack back or, or um, swags, whatever your question is, I would be happy to help you out with that. And uh, to do that, all you need to do is just search for Scott Weaver or Scott Weaver videos. And you can click on it. And there's the subscribe button, of course. Um, and then you click onto my face here. And over here, you'll see a donate to PayPal. You hit that. And it'll bring you to the link. And it is safe and secure. There it is right there. You can donate with either a credit card, uh, any credit card or debit card, or by PayPal. Um, of course, this is not necessary, and I'm going to keep giving you the uh, best uh, videos that I possibly can with the limited resources I have. <laughs> but anyhow, thank you very much for watching, and I will catch you next time.